Hey, welcome back to Skinny Scatter. Today we're taking a look at the Whiteout subseries from Nerf. Let's get started. So the Whiteout series is a subseries of End Strike Blasters that was released in 2011. They are Walmart exclusive and are no longer being produced. In total, there are four blasters in this line as well as two refill packs. We have the Long Strike, the Deploy, the Night Finder, and the Maverick. So starting off with the smallest blaster in the series, we have the Night Finder EX3. This is one of seven color variations of this blaster, and it is a direct prime single shot. So starting up at the front, we have the main single barrel. To load this blaster, take a single dart and insert it into the barrel. Pull back on your priming handle, and you can pull the trigger to fire one dart. Below the barrel, we have the main gimmick of this blaster, which is a red laser. To operate it, you must insert two AA style batteries into the grip. Then you can pull down on the trigger halfway to engage the laser. Below the light, there is a spot for you to store two extra darts. On top of the blaster, we have a end strike style rail that you can attach different optics or anything you want to it. And behind that, there is a loop style priming handle. Moving down to the grip, the grip on this blaster is actually quite comfortable. It fills my hand really well. That is the Nightfinder EX3. Now let's take a look at the Maverick Rev6. So the Maverick is a revolver style blaster and is one of seven color variations. Starting up at the front, we have a front sight that corresponds with the rear sight. Moving back, we have the cylinder. To eject the cylinder, press the button on the side and push from the back. You can now load your six rounds from the front. When you're done, you close it up, pull back on the priming handle, and pull the trigger to fire one dart. Like I said, this blaster holds six darts. Behind that, we have the priming handle. There is a tactical rail on top and a lanyard mount behind that. Underneath that, we have the trigger. This is a fairly long trigger pull, but it's also performing two functions. As you can see, one, it is rotating the cylinder, and it's also releasing the catch. Moving down, we have the grip. There's not too much to say about it. It's fairly standard, and it's also quite comfortable. That is the Maverick Rev 6. Now let's take a look at the Deploy CS6. The Deploy is a magazine-fed pump-action springer with a unique gimmick of being able to be quote-unquote deployed. Starting up at the front, we have an end strike barrel lug. Below that, we have the priming handle with storage for a single dart. Next to the barrel, we have a red light that can be operated via the switch on the bottom. This requires three AAA style batteries that can be installed here. Behind that, we have the magazine and the magazine release. Then we have the button to deploy the blaster. This is what it looks like in its collapse form. Deploying it does this. This button is built into a carrying handle, which also features a tactical rail. And these are the sights that are built into the handle. Under that, we have the grip. Now this grip does have to collapse, so I will give it some leeway, but it is not the most comfortable grip in the world but it does its job and it works. And finally, we have the stock, which is quite wobbly and also features a sling attachment point. That is the Deploy CS6. Now for the final blaster, the Long Strike CS6. So the Long Strike is a bolt action magazine fed springer that has been released in three different color variations, excluding the new modulus one. Starting up at the front, there is a end strike barrel lug for you to mount the included barrel. The barrel itself is quite long. It features a tactical rail on top and on the bottom. It has a flip-up sight towards the middle, and it doesn't impede performance too much because of the large barrel diameter. Moving back from the barrel, we have a sling loop that corresponds with two other ones on the stock. Behind that, there's a little bit of a foregrip here for you to place your offhand while firing. And behind that, we have the magazine well. To fire the blaster, pull back on the priming handle and push forward. You can now pull the trigger once to fire a dart. There are two more tactical rails on top of the blaster as well as an included optic. This sight is actually very unique in that it can be used in the collapsed position or in the extended position. And behind the sight is a rear iron sight that corresponds with the front one on the barrel. 
There's also a priming indicator on the back of the blaster. This is unprimed and this is primed. Moving down, we have the magazine release and the trigger as well as the grip. Now the grip is fairly unconventional, but it is quite comfortable. Finally, the stock. The stock is fairly lengthy for a Nerf gun and it also is quite comfortable. You can store two magazines, one on each side like that. This works only with six round magazines, but it is compatible with the newer Elite style of six round magazines. There was also two dart packs released in the series. There was a pack of 16 Whistlers and a pack of 16 Streamlines. So that's all of the products in the Whiteout series. Now, there was one more blaster that was never released called the Spectre Rev 5. As far as I'm aware, this is the only photo known to exist of it and got canceled pretty early on in the development stage. Now let's take these blasters to the firing range and see how they perform. First firing some whistlers out of the Night Finder. Now some Adventure Forest Waffles. Now shooting some Whistlers out of the Maverick. some Adventure Forest Waffles. Now shooting some Streamlines out of the Deploy. Now some Adventure Force Waffles. Now shooting some Streamlines out of the Long Strike. Now some Adventure Force Waffles. As you can see, these blasters do not hit very hard because they are end strike and are kind of outdated. So in a nutshell, I would really only recommend buying any of these blasters if you're a hardcore collector. Just because of their price and they don't perform very well, so they're not really plausible for competitive nerfing. Now, if you're a collector that is starting out and are interested in a whiteout blaster, or you just think they look cool, I would highly recommend picking up the Night Finder for three reasons. One, as we can see, it hits harder. Two, it is the least expensive out of all of them, ranging between $15 and $25, depending on how good of a deal you can find. And three, it's also the easiest to modify out of all of them. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.